Hey y'all, it's Tammy and Chris with Collard Valley Cooks. We are making mama's fudge today. Christmas would never be Christmas without my mama's homemade fudge. This is the old fashioned kind with the sugar and the and the evaporated milk, which is canned milk, um, and good old butter and cocoa. So let's get over here. I've already got my butter melted in this pot. And real quick, we're gonna add our sugar and cocoa to it and milk. Make sure it's extra fine. I put a little extra in there so I'll not fill this one quite all the way. So we're gonna use about three tablespoons of cocoa. Now, if you want it uh, richer, you can put more cocoa in it, but I can't remember if I say heaping or not. Oh, it says heaping tablespoons. Mm -hmm. So I better just... A little extra. Yeah, another at least another tablespoon extra. So I'll just say four tablespoons. I don't even know if that'll be enough. We'll just throw some in. Just throw some cocoa in there and mix it up. Mama just used a regular tablespoon. She didn't use a measuring cup, measuring one. And she would just put three heaping ones in there and get those little pieces of cocoa beat up a little. And now we're going to come over here and we're going to pour this into our stick. It's a whole stick of butter melted in here. And you want to bring this to a slow boil. We're going to put in a cup of evaporated milk. And I am just going to barely mix this because I don't want a lot of sugar on the sides of my pot. When you're making candy, you gotta be really careful because it's the sugar granules that can really mess up the candy if you don't get it. If one sugar crystal doesn't melt, all it takes is one to get in your candy and turn it back to sugar. Now what you do is you bring this to a very slow boil and you don't get in a hurry. So whenever you make candy, you gotta have a little bit of patience. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is take this out of there and you're gonna put this in the sink and don't use it again because it had the sugar crystals on it. We're gonna put a lid on it and since I already had my butter melted, I'm gonna pull this heat up and start heating it up some. Now, I'm not putting it all the way on high, more like a medium, okay? I am going to take some peanuts. These are raw peanuts and chopped pecans, and we're going to put them in the oven until just about the time you start to smell them, probably about eight minutes or so, 350. I mean, as soon as you start to smell these, you need to take them out because, if you, especially pecans. If you get pecans in there and you cook them even two minutes too long, they taste bad, okay? All right, today I have out a thermometer. Mama never used one, but she didn't have one. Um, I don't typically use them, but I am going to use one today. Now you can't use it when the lid is on there. I like to use a lid when I make candy. And I'm just gonna turn this timer on and I'm gonna put it on three minutes. So you're gonna give this a good three minutes on a medium boil before you even take the lid off of it and use your thermometer. And I know it's probably not gonna be ready, but we will check it out, all right? This um, recipe is in the second cookbook. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. And this is a, Mama always used a brownie pan. Whether it's a nine by nine or a seven by 11, it'll work. Uh, it's, a, it's good to use a pan that's squared and that way your fudge can be cut into square pieces. Get you out of quite a few spatulas because you're going to, Mama always did this so I do. You're gonna discard them every time you use them in case they got a sugar crystal on them. Okay, and you're gonna have less uh, likely of a chance of getting a sugar crystal in your fudge. It's boiling good. I smell that. 
Smells good, don't it? Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna check the temperature. You're gonna want it to a softball stage. This thermometer is nice because it doesn't sit completely on the bottom. And so you don't have to worry about getting the thermometer on the bottom of the pot. And right now it's about, it's still got a while to go. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these pecans out and I'm gonna put my peanuts back in there just for a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna set these pecans. I put them on parchment so that it's easy to pick them up. And I'm gonna put these over here on the counter mm -hmm. so that I wanna cook my peanuts a little bit longer. They're a little bigger than those pecan pieces. So it's gonna take them just a little bit longer. What's it at, Chris? Oh, I can't see. What am I looking for? It's at 220. Mm -hmm. It's gotta get to that first red point. Okay. If you're on Facebook, I actually posted an old video of Mama's Fudge today. If you're on YouTube, you, you didn't see it unless you've looked at it the last few days. Um, it's an older one. I use a stainless steel pot. It's a lot harder uh, because you have to get water and use a spatula and make sure all your sugar's off the sides of the pot. The great thing about using this nonstick pot is that I don't have to worry about all that stuff. It's, it's doing a wonderful job of keeping the candy where it needs to, to be. Now, you can check this in water, in a glass of water, and just drop it down in drops. Mom always did it that way. She could tell by just looking at the candy when it was ready, um, by the way it looks on the top of it. But you can check it, and if you drop it down into the water and it forms a circle ball, then it's ready to take out. It has to be a formed ball. Uh, so if it hits that water and it separates, it's not ready. Um, if it hits the water and it turns stringy, then you've cooked it to a string hard ball. And you don't want it to be hard like candy. You want it to be soft like fudge. If you cook it too long, really and truly, it's just dry fudge. Everybody's going to like it anyway. But. Yeah, I mean, they can eat it. Yeah. Uh, some people cook it like that every time, and everybody likes it that way. Some some people just like it like that. Well, because that's how their granny always made it. And, mm -hmm. You know, most of the time, my granny, when she made chocolate, it was sugar. Yeah. It turned to sugar every time. So if you went to <laughs> granny's and got a piece of her candy, candy, and you took a bite, it was like hard sugar with chocolate in it. If that's the way your granny made it, sugar. then if you let it turn sugar, you're going to be liking it anyway. All right, it's ready. Here we go. And I mean, as soon as it's ready, take it off the stove. Here I am without my mittens on. And get it into your mixer. And the great thing about using a nonstick pan is it just slides right out of there. Look at that. So easy. And we're going to turn this on and hope it don't splatter us because it's hot. All right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix it. Um, it's gotta cool down. Now back years ago, they would just have to beat it with their hands. Now we use a mixer and it's a lot easier on you. You're gonna put a dollop of peanut butter in it. Now, do they have to put peanut butter if they don't like it? And some people don't like it. I don't think so. If you if you cook it right, but peanut butter helps it set up too. Uh -huh. Mama always used a, a bit of peanut butter in it. Not a lot, but just about a tablespoon. I mean, you've seen about how much I put in there. A good deep in tablespoon. Mm -hmm. And let's add the vanilla and then we're going to pour it up. See, all right, look. Sometimes I add more cream. Because do you see how it's doing? It's already turning like dry looking. That means it's not going to be creamy. It means it's going to be dry. It tastes good. But I don't want it to turn dry. So what I do is I let it sit in my mixer for a few minutes. Take it off of the thing. And if it's dry looking like that, see how that looks dry? I add a little milk to it. 
I'm not, I just keep testing it. And if it still looks dry, like it's gonna be dry, then I add a little milk again. I think that's gonna do it. I think, yeah. So, what I like to do is just keep testing it like that and uh, letting it sit in the mixer. It's not gonna hurt it to sit here for a few minutes before you pour it up. And the best way to test it is off the actual beater. And it's creamy now. It's not so dry tasting. You don't want it to be dry. You want it to be creamy. Hey y'all, it's Timmy and Chris. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't like my fudge after I poured it up. And it didn't look glossy on the top and I should have known because it was really too dry. Um, I'm gonna show you how it looked. You can see it right here on this paper and how it looked dry. Now it doesn't have sugar crystals in it or anything, so it cooked right. It's just too dry, all right? So what I did, and I'm gonna be honest with you, y'all know I make mistakes and then I fix them. My peanuts wouldn't parched enough, I was rushing. That's the only thing about videoing is you rush and you try not to be on here too long for y'all. And my peanuts really weren't parched enough. So I actually went through my fudge, picked out the peanuts, put the fudge back in a bowl. I toasted more pecans because I didn't use the pecans. I put the bowl with the candy that I had picked, you know, that I got all the peanuts out of. I put it in the bowl. I stuck it in the microwave. Um, I brought, I, I heated it on about two minutes, all right? And then I added just a little bit of milk. Now you can see that the fudge is creamier. Now you gotta be careful. If you pour up your fudge and it's too dry, there's absolutely nothing wrong. If I had, I wouldn't have had to pick the peanuts out of it if I'd have cooked them right. All, all I'd had to do is heat it up in the microwave, put it in a bowl. You don't have to heat it a lot. Add a little milk to it and pour it back up. I mean, that's the great thing about making candy. People think if they fail, there's no fixing it. Sometimes you can fix stuff. If your fudge is overcooked and it's too dry, all you gotta do is heat it back up, add a little milk to it, and then pour it back up. Now, if it turns to sugar, you gotta cook it all again. You can heat it back up on the stove and cook it again, but if you add peanut butter and then you try to recook it, it's not gonna taste good. But what I did is not cooking it. All I did is warmed it so that I could mix in a little bit of milk and pour it back up. And you can already see that it's wanting to set up on me since I decided to let y'all watch me. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do real quick is stick it back in here for one minute, just show y'all. Then I'm gonna mix it up, pour it back in this pan. But I just thought I'd throw that in there for y'all because so many times um, we put money in candy and we think that we gotta eat it that way and we don't. Uh, so it's a pretty cool fix if it's just a little dry. But like I said, if it turns to sugar, you pretty much messed it up. But you can't cook it. You can even put it in the microwave and cook it longer. Let's see if this is warm enough for me. It's got butter in it, so it warms pretty doggone quick. See? So, if that happens to your fudge, and it doesn't have a pretty top, and it's just a little too dry, just take it out, warm it up, put a little milk in it, and pour it back up. I thought to myself, I was sitting there, I thought, you know what? I want to eat that fudge and I don't like it that much. And I want to eat it, so I'm going in there and I'm fixing it. Really, your fudge ought to look more like that. It ought to look glossy when you pour it up. I 
That's pretty, ain't it? I just thought I'd show y'all that. Never give up. You can fix it. Mama would make a batch with peanuts and a batch with pecans. And she would make divinity and fudge every year. Every year. All right. Y'all enjoy it? Boy, it's really good dipped in these pecans. Woo, it's so delicious, y'all. Y'all come back and watch us again on Colored Valley Cooks where we cook like our mamas did. Bye, y'all. We love ya.